Hello everyone. Welcome to a new video in this series, Women Who Inspire. In today's video, we are going to talk about Gertrude Ederly. My name is Deepshura Chaudhary. Below is the link to a Facebook group that I've created. Please feel free to send me a request if you wish to join. Gertrude was an American competition swimmer, an Olympic champion, and one of the best-known female sports celebrity. Gertrude was born on 23rd October 1905 in New York City. She was the daughter of parents who had recently immigrated from Germany. She was passionate about swimming from a very young age. Her father owned a summer cottage in the Highlands, New Jersey, and at the age of nine years, she learned to swim on the Jersey Shore. In the picture on the right, you can see Gertrude with her sister Margaret. It was at age five when Gertrude got measles and some complications resulted in her being hard of hearing. According to her, the doctors told her her hearing would get worse if she continued swimming, but she loved the water so much, she just couldn't stop. Her love and passion for swimming made her drop out of school and she started training as a full-time swimmer. In 1918, she joined a women's team and began to swim competitively. She set many world and American freestyle records for distance varying from 100 meters to 800 meters. She made headlines at age 16 when she won the three and a one half mile Joseph Day Cup long distance race from Manhattan Beach to Brighton Beach on the afternoon of 1st August 1922. This field included 51 other women including America's leading women swimmers and Europe's leading women swimmer Hilda James who was from Liverpool, England. It was in this race that she broke seven records. I will show you a newspaper clipping covering this race in a minute. By the age of 20, she had set 29 world records in women's freestyle including a long distance from New York to New Jersey. She swam the 22 miles in 7 hours and 11 minutes and that record stood for over 80 years. Here in this photo, you can see a paper clipping about her Joseph Day Cup long distance race. The headline reads, 15-year-old girl swimmer defeats 51 in race, including English champion. She was called the dark horse because she was not expected to win, but had the talent and skills to cause a major upset, which she did. After her stellar performances, she became an obvious choice for the 1924 Summer Olympics in Paris. Now most of you might already know that just qualifying to participate in the Olympics is a very difficult thing to do, let alone win a medal in the Games. What makes her achievement great is that Gertrude was swimming with an injured knee and the team were fatigued because they were put up in hotels away from Paris. We will not go into why this was, but just know that the athletes had to travel 5 hours each day just to practice in the Olympic pool. Despite all these issues, she won a gold medal in the 400m freestyle relay team event and won a bronze medal in the 100m and 400m individual freestyle events. Like any great athlete in the world, she was disappointed not to win gold medals in all the three events. On the right, you can see a photo of the US swimming team of 1924 Summer Olympic Games and here is Gertrude Ederly. On the left, you can see what a 1924 Olympics gold medal looked like. After she came back from the Olympic Games, she set her sight on a test that required extreme physical and mental strength and this test was to swim across the English Channel. Five men had already successfully done this. A few women had tried, but none of them were successful. By the way, the English Channel is a narrow arm of the Atlantic Ocean separating the southern coast of England from the northern coast of France. I will show you a map of the English Channel soon. Her first attempt to cross the English Channel came in 1925. Now I have an interesting story to share with you all. She swam 23 miles in 8 hours and 43 minutes in cold and choppy water and decided to rest for a while. The people in the boat who were supposed to encourage her and look out for her thought that she was unconscious and was going to drown. They touched her and she was immediately disqualified because of interference. She was extremely upset with this and she told them that she was simply resting and could have easily continued her swim. 
In 1926, she attempted to cross the English Channel again. This time around, her sister Margaret, whose photo I showed you earlier, designed a two-piece bathing suit that would not cause much drag in the water, and Gertrude herself designed the goggles. In the early morning hours of August 6, 1926, shortly after 7 a.m., with a body covered in sheep grease, she started swimming from Crepe Grenade, France. She had to fight cold temperature, strong tidal currents, and strong winds. She reached Kingstown on the English coast after swimming approximately 35 miles in 14 hours, 31 minutes, which was a world record. And here's the amazing thing. She beat the men's time by two hours. With this, she became the first woman to cross the English Channel. By the way, just in case you're wondering about the sheep grease, it was used to fend off jellyfish stings and to add warmth because the water was cold. On the right, you see Bill Burgess, who was her coach, coding Adderley with sheep grease prior to her start on a successful channel swim of 1926. Okay, so here you can see the English Channel. It is a narrow arm of the Atlantic Ocean separating the southern coast of England that you see here from the northern coast of France that you see here. This marker that you see here is Cape Grenade, France and this marker here is Kingstown on the English coast and this is the course that she swam. Here in this photo, you can see Gertrude with her sister Margaret and her coach Bill Burgess after she finished her English Channel swim. So this is the news that covered her amazing feat. On the top left, you see Gertrude covered with grease over her swimming dress shaking hands with Miss Lillian Cannon just before entering the sea. In the middle is Gertrude's trainer, Burgess. By the way, Miss Cannon was also a swimmer who was trying to swim across the English Channel. In the top right, you see a bottle thrown from the tug to Gertrude in the water during her swim across the Channel. In the middle left, you see a group of friends and family watching Gertrude's progress from the tug, including her father, who you see here. In the middle, you see Gertrude swimming the Channel in a choppy sea. In the bottom left, you see the first man and the first woman to swim the Channel. You can see Miss Edderly here at the Webb Memorial, Dover. Matthew Webb was the first man to cross the English Channel in 1875. In the bottom right, you see Gertrude who was carried to her hotel on the shoulders of Ishaq Helmi who was the first Egyptian to swim the English Channel and Louis Timpson, the American swimmer. Gertrude received an ovation from the crowd at Dover. After she came back to the States, she received numerous accolades. A ticker tape parade was given to her by New York City and more than 2 million people lined the streets and chanted Trudy Trudy. By the way, a ticker tape parade is a long-standing tradition in New York City. It includes paper streamers or ticker tape thrown from windows to celebrate major accomplishments. In addition to this, she was also invited to the White House by President Calvin Coolidge who called her America's best girl. There was a short film made on Gertrude and she also played herself in a movie called Swim Girl Swim. Now here is something interesting. Her fame brought her many marriage proposals and she also got engaged to a man but when she implied that it might be difficult being married to a woman who could not hear properly, he agreed and disappeared. In case you are wondering if she ever got married, she did not. In the picture on the left you can see the ticker tape prayed for Gertrude in New York City. Just look at all the people who gathered to greet and cheer for her. In the right, you can see the poster of the movie Swim Girl Swim and you can see her name here. As years passed, her hearing went from bad to worse. The English Channel Swim had a significant role to play in this deterioration. In 1933, she received another blow to her health when she fractured her spine after slipping on broken tiles in her apartment and was in a cast for four years that limited her mobility. Though the doctors told her that she would never be able to swim again, she made an appearance in Billy Rose's Aquacade in 1939. In case you are wondering what an Aquacade is, it is a water spectacle that has music, swimming and diving. Later in her life, she taught swimming to children at the Lexington School for the Deaf. Though she did not know the sign language, she demonstrated what the children needed to know about swimming. It was on 30th November 2003 that she passed away in Wyckoff, New Jersey at the age of 98. 
Gertrude Ederly was inducted into the International Swimming Hall of Fame in 1965 and into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 2003. An annual swim from New York City's Battery Park to New Jersey's Sandy Hook is named in her memory and follows the course she swam. In addition to this, there is also a recreation center in Manhattan that is named after her. It is important to keep in mind that 1920s was an age when female athletes were not taken seriously. She showed the world that women given the opportunity can achieve exceptional things in the field of sports and sometimes even achieve more than men. Hats off to her for inspiring a generation of sports women. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys soon with a new video. Bye bye.